Piper was a, was a, a, a crazy cat, and I loved him a lot, and uh, I looked up to him a lot. I, uh, because I grew up close to Nashville, I got to see John Hartford probably the first time on TV in about 1966 or 7. And I was wondering how come a guy was singing didn't play guitar, uh, that he play, you know, could keep his role going on his five-string banjo. And um, he, um, yeah, okay, well, I, I, there's, uh, <laughs> I, again, you know, I'm very fortunate that I was just old enough to get in on some of this stuff. So I would be the youngest guy hanging out with everybody. I was about 19 or so, 20. And we all went up to uh, Philadelphia to play. Uh, it was actually it was actually at the hotel where people later got Legionnaire's disease. But um, we were staying at this. So John brought me up there and it was Vassar, Clinton, it was Vassar Norman, Tut, me, Dave Holland and uh, David Bromberg was going to meet us there. And uh, so we played at this job in Philadelphia, and it was a very nice hotel. And um, we went down to eat, and the Mater D, <laughs> if you can picture Steve Martin with a, with a pencil line mustache playing a Mater D, that's the guy, right? <laughs> and, uh, and he took one look at us, and he, you know, and he uh, basically took, no, you can't come in here without, without a coat on. And, uh, so John was a bit dismayed because he goes, I, "I'm buying eight rooms here. I, you know, we're st I'm a guest." He goes, "Well, you can't, you know, I, I can't do the guy's accent." But he raised, like, "You can't come in," and uh, he wouldn't let us come in. But he said, "So we have to." Have, so John said, "Does it have to be a suit jacket, a sport coat?" He goes, "No, a coat." So we go, "Okay." So we all retreat back up to the room. Now, Tut Taylor was just. Uh, if you ever saw that him and John stand together, John. I weighed 160 pounds and tut well well over twice that or more and um, so we went up to the room and um, John said tut you got a sport coat he said, yeah he goes, give me your sport coat so John <laughs> took off his shirt he's naked from the waist up he puts on a necktie and tut's coat that would wrap around him like three times <laughs> and so he said, okay, let's go eat. <laughs> and so, and we go back down and, and the Mater D just, he took one look at John and just started laughing and said, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, John, you know, it was, he, he, he was an amazing uh, cat. I mean, and uh, he, once he got a thing in his head that he was gonna learn how to do it, he did. Like one day, I, I just remember, you know, he went, I went, when I met him, he had the band called the Aerial Playing Band with Tut, Vassar, Norman, and him. And then it got down to just Vassar and John. Uh, a little known story is that I, I was actually asked to join that band um, to replace Tut Taylor, but we, we had just started New Grass Revival. It wasn't, it wasn't the right time. And, um, but um, then it got down to just John and Norman, and they, they played uh, the great record Morning Bugle with Dave Holland on bass. And a matter of fact, this is the mandolin Norman owned when they made Morning Bugle. So, and then I got it in 73. So this next year, I will have owned this one 50 years, thanks to Norman Blake. And, um, but, uh, and then, but now John was, became a solo performer. Norman started making his own records. And that's when John decided, you know what, it'd be entertaining if I danced while I did while I did this. Okay, and so by golly, he decided, and he did. So he learned to dance while he played, and and uh, then he decided, you know what, I'm going to get the audience singing along on everything that they, you know. And so he did that, and so he went from really being a kind of a stand there, just play and sing guy, to a very outgoing entertainer that by himself could entertain thousands of people. Just, just him, and then, or like if you've ever seen some of his handwriting on any of these album jackets or anything, all of a sudden one day he just decided, I'm going to learn how to do great calligraphy, and he did, and he told me it was like, oh yeah, it's real easy, you just like, you get in rhythm, it's like rhythm of music, and I'm like, yeah, right, well, <laughs> for you it is that way, or, and, and, and same way, John, he, uh, he decided once that he, that he, he didn't know how to read music and he was going to learn to read music. So he learned to read music and then he started writing hundreds of fiddle tunes 
just by writing them out in musical notation before he ever tried them on the fiddle. So he was pretty, and, oh yeah, and he became a steamboat captain. And, uh, <laughs> and, and in order to be a steamboat captain, you have to, uh, one of your tests is you pretty much got to know every mile of the Mississippi River. I and mean, it's a test and you can't, you can't make 90, you got to make 100. And uh, John did that, you know. And I will, funny, I, 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 now I have to do a shameless plug because on November 11th, I finally have another record coming out and it's John Hartford songs. Just saw that online yesterday when I was looking it up, so very excited about that. It's gonna be a brilliant record. And, and Hartford, when you talk about him learning to, to write, he was collecting traditional American fiddle tunes too, if I understand correctly, I mean, you know better. I believe he was, you know, like, like many people have done before, he was cruising around finding the old time traditional musicians and preserving this music by writing absolutely. it down. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and one of the tunes I <laughs> I had to record, because I played and sang on the original version of Granny Won't You Smoke Some Marijuana. <laughs> so I did that, and he told me, he, actually, he said, yeah, I took that from the old fiddle tune, Polly Won't You Drink Some Good Old Cider. So I went, oh, okay. What a way with words he had, too, because I, I don't think there's maybe uh, a couple of days that go by that I don't think about the line from that song. Uh, I used to get high and listen to the Beatles. Ain't as much fun now that it's legal. And he wrote that in 76. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, a question? It's a visionary.